Hello everyone and welcome to a small tutorial how to use Simulink uh, Stateflow. So let's start. When you are in the regular Simulink environment you can just click in here and type charge and a small yellow window will pop up. If you go in there you will notice that the environment, the background changes to yellow to show you that you are now in the charge. This is basically where we will do all our logic for the state flow we're going to create. And you will also notice that on the left a lot more icons are visible than before in the regular Simulink environment. And we will go through some of those icons on the left, the most important ones. So first of all, the most important block in state flow in my opinion is probably the state itself. And if you click, if you make the first state here, you already have two blocks created because you immediately create a default transition, which you can draw from here, which is basically where this chart will start. This is like the initial condition for this chart. So these are the states that you can wire together and you can jump from state to state depending on various conditions. And these states can have names, you can just I don't know, call this state first, for example. So this is just the name of the state. And in here, you can basically program everything you want, for example, x is 1 or something like that. But first of all, you can have three different uh, times when you can do something in the state itself. So you can have, you can do something on entry, you can do something during a state, and you can do something when you exit a state. So I actually only used entry so far. So on entry of the state, you do something. So in entry, you can just type in what you want to do. For example, set the value x to 1. Simple as that. Um, if you go to here, you can see that if you have, for example, a finished Simulink simulation or a Simulink control in Simulink or something like that, and you want to move that into something like state flow, you make that you, you want to use it in a in a step by step uh, environment. You have to somehow convert your Simulink simulation into this state flow environment. And you can use, uh, for example. The Simulink function that you can draw from here, or you can use the MATLAB function that you can draw from here. And these are used differently in here. For example, you can uh, name these. For example, you can call this Simulink test, for example. And if you go in here, you will notice that you're in another environment once again. You can go in and out with these arrows here. So in here, you are back in a regular Simulink environment, so you can do things like uh, creating and adding uh, various data or something like that. For example, with sums, you can have inputs, like if you do subsystems in regular Simulink, you can have outputs. And you, for example, we can make a small Simulink function that adds just the one to the input, and you can name these, for example, I don't know, you can name these input. And you can name this one output. This is just uh, to show that this is a function block. And if you go out again, you will notice that this automatically uh, actualizes and refreshes. And you can see that these names are already refreshed and these are the same in, as in here. Which is kind of neat because now, for example, we can use our Simulink test function here. For example, we can say, okay, we set x to 0. But now we say x is Simulink test, and we want to input x, for example. So this should basically increment x by 1. And the same goes with MATLAB functions. You can go in here, and you can uh, have regular MATLAB functions, and you can program them like you're used to. So this is kind of neat. So when we have states, let's delete this and delete this. So this is basically how you can implement functions both in MATLAB and Simulink environment in here. But usually if you want to do something in state flow, you have more than one state. So you can create more states here. 
and do stuff with them. So if you go to the edge of one of these states, yeah, you, you should name them too. I don't know, state two and state three here. Uh, if, if you go to the edge, you will notice that your mouse pointer becomes a small crosshair and you can pull it and you see an arrow. And if you go to another state or to the state itself where you started, you will notice that it snaps to the object. So I can go down to this state. So this is now a transition. By now, the transition the, the transition has no uh, specific uh, condition, but you can add one by clicking on it, and you will see that there's a question mark, and in here you can type your condition. For example, we set x to 0 in the first state here. So for example, we can ask in the transition if x is 0. Delete this in here, and you will see that it asks now, like in an if, in an if clause, if x is zero, and if that's the case, it goes down to state. But what is really nice in this environment, you can also do things like you can go to the state and type in after two seconds. So it will go to this state after two seconds have passed, which is really nice. You can also, because this works just like an if, you can also combine these statements and say if x is one again. So it's simple as that. Uh, if you have multiple, like for example, you have this one wiring down here, but you have another one, and you say, I want this state to repeat itself. So you can now see there are numbers on these transitions. Here a 1, here a 2. This means this is the priority. So if you would make this priority 1, it will always repeat itself, and even if this state, uh, if this condition is true, it will never go down here, because this, con uh, this, this wire has priority 1. So, for example, if you have like some, this this could happen to you. So in here you use I don't know some some sort of function where you ask a status, but you want to know the status over and over again. You have to repeat the function in itself. So repeat the state in itself. And as soon as X has met some certain criteria, for example, you go to the next state, and I don't know, go on entry and do some more stuff with X. Exactly. Uh, be advised that if you start this simulation, it wish you, you should usually change this to infinite. And if you click on play, it will. This will not be two seconds because usually the simulink simulation time, it simulates as fast as it can go. So we'll see down here that it will will be at I don't know, 200,000 seconds in like two seconds in. So it will be very fast. Another thing, if you go once out uh, up to the regular Simulink environment once more. Uh, you can see this is more or less an isolated charge, but it doesn't have to be, because if we delete these faulty states in here and say, okay, let's make a very simple state, it just makes X to zero. And we click play here. We will see an error, which is okay, because it asks what X is. It wants to know what is it? Is it data, event, or a message? Uh, usually you want data. And here in the scope you can determine what it is. Is it just a local variable where you want to play inside the chart with it and uh, change the value of this? Or is it an input or is it an output? For example, you can set it to input, click OK, and you will see now on the outside that X is, can you can wire X in here. So for example, you can put constant here, put a constant here. Now X is in here. So setting it zero here, would be useless, but you can say if x is one, this one big, it should repeal itself. And due to x being a constant uh, that is one, it should do that. If you were, if you want to change things like that, you can go up here in the model explorer, and you can see all the the variables you can have here, you have here, and you have the scope. And for example, Simulink has some problems with data size, data type, and data size, and initial value. You can set all of these here. Uh, the scope, which port it is to change uh, the 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 order, which size it is. For example, if you have just a single number, you can put it like this, or you can just say minus one to inherit the size. Yeah, and here the type, usually it's inherited, but you can also set it to all the things that Simulink can handle. Um, another thing, if you click on here, 
you can see up here you have a small callback function where you can initialize uh, when, uh, if you you can initialize with uh, functions that you have for example you have an init function you can call it like this here so if you start the simulation it gets initialized with this function by itself and yeah the initialize if you start it if you pause it if you stop it if you close it everything is here so this is basically all the basic stuff that you have to know about state flow and yeah with these tools you can basically create bigger state flows like this and yeah so if you look at, have a short look at this it's basically only the things we just learned here for example here you have values in it which is just a matlab function which initializes some some uh, variables and then you ask if lockdown is zero and you go down here and there's a lot more stuff but it's all these basic functions it's just wiring around if this is true then go there and then repeat itself so this is very basic and i hope i could give you some insights on how to use simulink state flow